All right, hello guys. Uh, my name is Zach Ofsted. Uh, I grew up in Tulsa, uh, big speed to be exact, and I'm a software developer for Clever and F5. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about how I got my first job in tech without a CS degree and what I learned along the way and what I wish I knew before I got my job. So just a very brief backstory uh, to give some context. Uh, I graduated from Oklahoma State with a business degree. Then I went to teach English abroad for what was supposed to be one year, but it turned on, it turned into five. Um, the back end of those five years left me in April of 2019. Uh, I really missed 2019. Uh, I was in Spain with a few months to spare before starting a master's in linguistics. Um, I had seen a ton of boot camps around the US, but they were all a little too pricey for me. Um, and for some reason or another, I don't really remember why. Um, I searched boot camps in Europe and I found one called Le Wagon or The Wagon in English. Uh, it was $6,000, uh, nine weeks long, and I figured I'd give it a shot now because if I don't and I do my master's, then that's it. That's my career. Uh, and I didn't want to have any what ifs. So I loved it. I knew that I would. Uh, it was focused on Ruby uh, and its famous framework that I'm sure everyone has heard of, Rails, uh, as well as JavaScript. Um, and from the time I finished my boot camp, to me landing my first real job took 361 days. So I know a lot of bootcamp grads probably don't wanna hear that, but uh, it is what it is. So what the hell did I do in those 361 days? Um, I built a ton of websites and apps and posted a lot on LinkedIn. Uh, <laughs> it sounds pretty simple, right? That's what everybody does. But uh, let me unpack that a little into a few main points. So uh, the first one, one project in your portfolio is worth more than 10 certificates on your resume. Uh, if you have no experience and no references in the industry, your portfolio site should be your number one priority, in my opinion. Uh, show them that you know how to use something, not that you sat in a class or watched a video. Um, I've talked to too many junior devs that don't have a portfolio site or it looks like Craigslist. <laughs> so that plays right into number two, which is build websites, lots of them. Uh, and get intimate with HTML, CSS, and vanilla JavaScript. Uh, these are the building blocks of the web. There's really no way around it. Um, so start with just a static site. To pick one you visit a lot or that you really like the design of uh, and just try to copy it. Uh, if you want to go the extra mile, you can use a tool like Figma, uh, wireframe it beforehand and put your own touches on it. Uh, you'll find a ton of holes in your knowledge. Uh, later on down the road, after you have a solid understanding of CSS and JS, uh, you'll better understand why things like CSS and Bootstrap and Vue and React and all these tools exist and what problems they're solving. Um, on top of that, you'll learn about Git, deployment, DNS, uh, and all that good stuff. Uh, then you can take what you know about JavaScript uh, onto Node for backend or really any, any other language, which plays into number three, which is don't worry about the language you learn first. Uh, just pick one, seriously. Uh, my first project at my job was in Laravel. I had never used it before, uh, but I knew MVC from Rails uh, and I've just learned PHP on the fly uh, with what I know from JS and Ruby. The underlying ideas are surprisingly similar uh, and you can always Google syntax. So number four, uh, don't read about code, write code. Uh, I'm not trying to say you should never read about code, um, but start writing. Uh, and then research and read when you don't know how to do something. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I read something really cool and then I forgot about it uh, because I never got to use it. So I don't know the statistics, but uh, I guarantee you, you're at least a million times more likely to remember something if you learn it in action. Um, number five is, oh, I have a slide missing. Uh, it's use LinkedIn a lot. Uh, post a screenshot or a link to a new site you designed uh, a code snippet of a problem you solved, uh, an article you thought was interesting. Uh, on top of posting, look for other junior devs that you can collaborate with. Uh, it's really refreshing to work with someone else rather than just in your little coding hole all day long. Uh, and look for people that work at the company you want to work for. Don't just send your resume off and hope for the best. Uh, I can't stress that enough. Someone in HR, a senior engineer, even the CEO, if you're feeling brave, uh, send them a message ask them what stack they use uh, and then build a project in that stack ask for some kind of recommendation or about some volunteer work they they did uh, just personalize it and show that you did some homework and that you care uh, we've all seen copy and pasted messages especially on linkedin uh, anyone can see right through it 
But seriously, 20 years ago, how would you have gotten in touch with an executive or a CEO at a company? Uh, it's an unprecedented tool and you should take advantage of it. Um, number six, pick up the phone. Don't be afraid to call someone and say you saw a job posting. Do it old school. Ask for the hiring manager's email. Uh, if you can get a, a John Doe at whatevercompany.com rather than info or HR at company.com, you're already miles ahead of other resumes. Um, the next one is put down the phone. Uh, iPhone has a very nice but kind of scary feature called screen time. Uh, after you see it, you'll probably want to throw your phone in the trash, but uh, turn your phone off or, or put it in the other room and focus for 45 minutes to one hour blocks uh, and then take a break. I guess that kind of goes for life in general, not just junior devs. Um, and then oh, there's my missing slide. Uh, no doesn't mean it's over. Uh, my current job, Clever, they told me no three times before I got hired. So don't give up. Um, and then a few more things. Uh, what I wish I knew before I started my job uh, is work in branches uh, on your own projects uh, when it's just you. At first, I was just working off of pushing to master, doing everything on master uh, because it was only me. Uh, and you'll never do this at your job. Uh, open pull requests uh, and review and merge your own code uh, yourself. It might seem silly and extra, but it will come in handy when you're working on a team. Trust me. Um, write pseudocode uh, and be your own rubber ducky. Uh, it will help you deconstruct complex problems into bite-sized chunks. Uh, and that comment you type out and would have forgotten will save you a lot of time and headaches later on. Uh, also, a lot of us are working remotely, so you can talk out loud to yourself. Uh, it's less awkward when you're at home than it is in the office. Um, you can be your own rubber ducky, like I said. Explain to yourself what this function should do. Uh, then once it's working, explain to yourself exactly what it's doing. Don't just accept that it's working and move on because a lot of things can seem like magic. Um, look at open source projects. This will help you get familiar navigating really large code bases that you didn't write. Uh, it's really easy to find things when you wrote it all. Uh, but on a job, you'll spend a lot of time just looking for things and reading other people's code. Sometimes even on Monday mornings uh, with projects I'm familiar with, it still takes me some time to reacquaint myself. Um, and lastly, and maybe most importantly, uh, don't take yourself too seriously. Uh, if you think you know it all or pretend to know more than you do, you're going to get burned uh, pretty bad and probably sooner than later. Um, you need to find that balance between, I'm going to figure this out no matter what, even if it takes five hours uh, and just asking someone else for help. There's a, a certain zen, if you will, in being able to just say, I don't know. So that's all I have for now. Uh, I hope this helps someone. Uh, if anyone has more questions or just wants to chat, you can find me on LinkedIn. Bye, guys.